People need to get out and understand how, what's happening. If they care about deer, if they care about elk, they need to understand that there's a big issue out here and it's gonna really affect the elk herds in the Western United States, well, in the whole country. Being a part of the sports person community, you probably couldn't have gone the last several years without seeing some kind of imagery um, via either social media or different research studies on uh, just what this disease does to cervids, and um, it's pretty it's pretty horrifying. CWD is posing a very very real threat to our wildlife populations. Um, you know, a, a lot of the media and the attention that you get with respect to CWD that, you, that you'll see is, is concerns about human health issues or is it safe to eat and, you know, a deer or elk from a CWD area, things like that. But I can tell you the message that both myself and, and the Wyoming Game and Fish Department really would like to convey to people is that CWD is impacting our wildlife populations. And when we, we're seeing and documenting these really extraordinarily high prevalences, it's, it's really having long-term impacts on the viability and the productivity of, of, these, of these herds, and particularly with mule deer herds. I think at some point you have to do something because you just can't leave it unchecked. Um, the prevalence levels that we just saw are getting so high and you know, you're dealing with a disease that's 100% fatal, so unchecked is it's it is impacting our populations right now and it's going to be that much more and i think down the road is actually going to impact the hunter participation levels you know a lot of what we know about how to manage chronic wasting disease comes from the failures of the past and what we've tried and what hasn't worked we know that Ignoring the disease doesn't work. We know that light management doesn't work. We know that short-term commitment to management practices also doesn't work. So we're really on the precipice right now of knowing the type of work that we need to do. It's not cheap, it's not easy, and it's not short-term. It's gonna require partnership, a long-term investment, and vigilance. But if we take the, those lessons learned from the past and apply that to what we know now, I think we can make a difference and we can control the disease. In Wyoming, we really love our mule deer. Um, and when we think about the many myriad challenges that mule deer face, it's not just chronic wasting disease, right? I mean, there's habitat fragmentation. We talk about roads and highways. We talk about fencing, rural subdivisions. Um, I mean, there's so many issues that our mule deer are facing, right? our cervids in general are facing. And this is yet another threat. And so you have to kind of put this high on the priority list if you care about having viable populations of wild cervids that you want to experience and see. I think you have to get the right information. And I think when people get the science and the information and, and the true picture of what the disease is, not, a, not only in Colorado, but in other states as well, I think they'll begin to understand the importance of it. When numbers of a disease are going up, such that CWD is, it is important. And I think we all understand the importance of wildlife in Colorado. CWD really spreads and takes a foothold under some ideal conditions. Number one, good quality habitat that brings in a lot of animals from a wide area. Number two, good quality food sources that concentrates animals over time, exposing them to other contaminated individuals in the environment. And then three, CWD really likes limited impact from outside management practices. You think about those conditions and that describes most of the private property in Colorado. So for landowners, I think they need to be concerned about chronic waste and disease because due to those things I just mentioned, the cervid herds on their property may disproportionately be affected by the disease over time. So there are examples of deer populations where we have seen prevalence actually stay relatively stable or even in some cases reduce. And these are areas uh, where usually some level of directed management has been done. The vast available data that we have for us today suggests that increasing harvest pressure in populations or sustaining an increased pressure in populations may help to limit that disease. And I think on the other hand, we also have data that suggests there are some practices that may be harmful for chronic wasting disease. Those are things like feeding or baiting, um, translocating or moving animals from areas where the disease is established, 
and unfortunately managing for higher buck populations or older age mature bucks. Those all actually seem to have the potential to worsen the situation with chronic wasting disease. Managing uh, our wildlife has always been important and there's always a number of impacts, weather, uh, nutrition, drought, but certainly disease plays a role in that. And if there are management tools that we can put into place, those are important to try to reduce the impact or the effect of chronic wasting disease on our free roaming herds. So trying to focus on limiting chronic wasting disease and managing our populations to be sustainable in the future. We do know that populations are dynamic on the landscape. They experience a lot of different challenges. And those populations with high prevalence of chronic wasting disease are less resilient. They're less capable of responding to those challenges and they're going to really start to struggle as time progresses. I, I think time is of the essence. Um, many times you, you, well, you don't get a do-over with certain diseases. If you don't act appropriately when opportune times occur, uh, you can't regain time. So if diseases are mounting and we have evidence that that is occurring, if rates are going higher, we probably need to look at those management tools now and see if we can affect change and, and try to reduce the incidence of disease when times are opportune. Well, for someone who doesn't understand chronic wasting disease and might not take it serious, I understand that approach. It's a disease that it, you can't really see in the landscape. It takes a long time to impact the animals. And if you're just hiking through the woods as a hunter or a wildlife viewer, you're probably not gonna notice anything. So I understand that. However, what we have learned in the past 10 years is if we all take that attitude, that it creates the perfect storm for the disease to slowly increase in populations and ultimately not only impact their health, but decrease those populations in North America. This is a really exciting time in chronic waste and disease management because we have so many good examples now, really sometimes for the first time we've had really good examples of what is effective with the management. However, there's one important key to making those scientific techniques really work, and that is the cooperation with all those involved, landowners, hunters, state fish and wildlife agencies. If we all come together, we can take advantage of that and apply what we've been learning to better understand how to manage the disease in the future.